Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
finishing the part that this whole chapter excites me. But yeah. Um, this last part, we often uh, actually at funerals will use this passage of scripture as one of the passages that we use to communicate the love of God for us, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. So I want to take a moment and thank uh, dear friend, Pastor Kenny Williamson, who came, Reverend Kenny Williamson. Amen. Yes, yes, amen, amen. 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 Came up from, from Joliet to, to surprise me uh, on this day. Hadn't said a whole lot about, um, hadn't said much uh, because I just wanted to take a moment of personal pastoral privilege to tell you that I thank you for your prayers. Um, one of the things that in the midst of uh, my sons going home, uh, even though it seems sudden to us, the Lord tells us that we should be prepared Amen. at all times. Yes, yes. And so I know there were some that were concerned about whether or not I would be strong enough to preach, and I'm not. Okay, <laughs> amen, amen. But I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, come on. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And so I trust that the Holy Spirit who is in me will lead and will guide. And we've been preaching for this last month plus yes, yes. Amen. about what? Living by the power of oh, God's Spirit. Spirit. Yes, yes. Now I find it pretty amazing and frankly kind of ridiculous if in the midst of losing my son, I wasn't living by the power of the Come Spirit. on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I do trust the word of God. I trust God's word for us. If you are in uh, the book of Romans, we're going to be, uh, finish this chapter off on this Palm Sunday uh, at 8, 8.35 to the end. Amen. And while you're finding your way there, if you would uh, share with us in our scripture verse together. Trust in the Lord with all of heart. Yes, Lord. Which is in 
Christ Jesus, oh. our Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. In those words. Amen. And today is Palm Sunday. Yes, yes. Christians of Palm all over the world are celebrating the day that Jesus came down from Jerusalem to be hailed as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They said these words, Hosanna. Hosanna to the King, Hosanna. This, this wonderful phrasing that acknowledges the power of God and who God is in Jesus Christ and treated Jesus as a king as he came in. And this day, we celebrate him coming into Jerusalem before a crowd that would then later in the week turn on him and say, crucify him. And, and, and so uh, they, they did it on trumped up charges. All pun intended. They would be the ones who would say Hosanna and then crucify him. So as we approach what is in Christian circles referred to as Holy Week, I want us to finish our series on living by the power of God's Spirit. So today I want to look at where Jesus' strength to go to the cross came from. It came from the love of God. And so, if I could use a theme today, uh, a title, it would be li the living by the power of God's spirit. And then the subtitle would be the power of nothing. The power of nothing. Verse 35 in this 8th chapter of Romans says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So our tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Uh, when Paul is sharing this, he, he is telling us something very important. He asks, he forms it in the form of a question. Who shall separate us? But Paul has already explained in the prior verses what it means to be a Christian and what it means to live as a Christian what can and cannot happen for those who are believers in Jesus Christ to walk by the power of the Spirit. He is reminding us when he gets to this question as he begins to end this chapter as we have it laid out. Paul is asking this question about who shall separate us. Is there anybody in your life that you believe can separate you from the love of Christ? Uh, if you remember those of us who are old enough to remember, there was Flip Wilson who used to say the devil made me do it. Right? And, and if Flip Wilson was right in what he said, that the devil made me do it, which is actually the excuse that a lot of believers in Jesus Christ use when we sin, we say the devil made me do it, or you know, well, you know, Lord knows my heart, so I'm doing it wrong, I'm gonna do it the way I'm gonna do it. When, when, we, when we think about that, we are saying, in effect, someone is capable of separating me from doing what truly is the will of God for my life. Now, that's, that, that's, in effect, what you're saying. So Paul asked the question, who should separate us from the love of Christ? And, and he, 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 he then gives us some, some ideas. Tribulation. You know, when you're going through and when you feel like all the things in your life stuff is just messing you up, tribulation, or distress, you know, you're dealing with some physical maladies or some mental issues that are going on and you don't know how to handle it, can distress keep me from the love of Christ or when I'm being persecuted, I didn't do anything wrong, but somehow I find myself in the midst of being put down or hurt or, or charged or, or, or accused in the midst of something that I did not do. Can, can persecution stop me from being, you know, separate me from the love of Christ. And famine, you know, when you get hungry uh, in America, we don't really have that much of an issue with hunger because we have so many places and ways in which to get something to eat. So we may not feel like we can relate to this, but I would, get, I would suggest to you if you took famine and switch famine over to looking at it from the, the love of God and then saying, if you love God, then you would eat his word, then maybe we are experiencing famine. Oh, all right, all right. The famine of his word, because when you 
don't know when you're not ingesting his word, when your, his word is not in your heart, when, it, when you're going through something like yeah, you're going yeah, through today, yeah. then you don't know what to do. You don't know how to respond. You can't handle it. You're ready to fall apart. But when yeah. you know that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ, yeah. I can stand because I've been just So Paul tells us after he has gone on to share this 
passage of scripture with us and he's telling us all of these things that the conqueror trusts in Christ. He is telling us that in the word of God is written that we are killed all the day long. That means that those who believe in Jesus Christ, we're going to experience trials and tribulations, troubles, situations. We're not going to, every day is not going to be great. Every day is not going to be sunshine. Every day is not going to be smiles and laughter. But if I am walking in Christ, I know that all things work together for good and good to them that love the Lord. And I can stand on that even in the midst of trials and tribulations. I can stand on that even in the midst of bad situations. I can stand on that even in the midst of death. Because nothing can separate me from the love of God. If you could just get that in your spirit and, and realize that, yeah, did I expect, did I expect my son to die quickly? No. Did I expect the suddenness of a call? No. But as I told you before, he, his passing, I told you that you need to be ready for somebody to make their transition. You have to be prepared because life will throw you a curve to try to throw you off base, to try to get you off of who Take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. And if you take your eyes off of Jesus Christ, you will fall. Yeah, yeah. Come here, Peter. When you was walking out on the water and you started looking around, but you were walking on the water, but now all of a sudden you turned around and looked some other way because the water looked happy. Then you took your eyes off of Christ and what happened? He fell right into the water. So, so God in the midst of your situation, no matter what it is you're going through, no matter how it seems, but to be able to say, in God I live and in God I trust. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm willing to trust the Lord no matter what. And, and, and that, that is what makes a believer in Jesus Christ a comfort. But as the, the poem shared, we are actually, and as, as Paul said, we are actually not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors as we walk with Christ. So he said, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. But you know, as, as you analyze this passage of scripture, as you look at it, it sounds wonderfully poetic and beautiful and all of this, but there is a catchphrase that people don't always see it. And I want you to take a look back at verse 37 because Paul again is addressing believers in Christ and he says, they in all these things we are more than conquerors. And in, in this last part, centers in on the understanding of a relationship with Jesus Christ in the midst of it, through him. Right? Not through my life, not through my friends, not through my mama, not through my daddy, not through my son or my daughter, but through him. That love us. And, and when you understand that, when it comes to your heart, when it gets in your spirit, man, there is an understanding that God wants us all to be more than conquerors. He wants us to, he wants you to be more than a conqueror. You might feel like my legs are hurting, my knees are hurting, my head is hurting. I got a whole lot of trouble at home. I got a whole lot of things I got to deal with. But if you just know that the word of God says that you are more than a conqueror, you can defeat anything that comes against you. Cancer cannot beat you. Husband or wife might beat you down, but you don't have to be down. You know, you can deal with depression, but it does not mean that you have to stop. You can be more than a conqueror. God is ready to hold you in the palm of his hand. He is ready to take you beyond where you see yourself right now. More. More than a conqueror. So there's power. Power. And the conqueror trust in Christ. But then it reminds me of what Paul was trying to communicate to us in this last portion of what I want to share. As he 
concludes this chapter, one of the most eloquent, poetically beautiful yeah, yeah. chapters in the Bible yeah. to me. They're beautiful songs. There are they're, they're some great things in Ecclesiastes. There are some great things in, in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Revelation has some great things for us. But Paul ends this chapter by telling us that real love binds us to Christ. Real love binds us to Christ. He said in verse 38, for I trying to communicate to somebody yeah, and tell yeah. them that I need you to understand what I'm trying to tell you yeah. is true. I'm trying to persuade us to believe in Jesus Christ. I'm trying to persuade people who don't believe in Jesus Christ that, that this is the right road to go. This is the right way to go. For I am, he said, but, but in this case, Paul, Paul is telling us something else. He, he's not talking about that I persuade Minister Rogers or, or uh, Larry Gaddy. He's not trying to say that I Things present, not things to come. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how many believers are people who claim to be? 
with me. Yeah.
So I stand on it realizing that even in the midst of his death, victory is mine.